For more than two decades, I've been chasing fighter planes around the world. But there was always one combat jet that I desperately wanted to fly. Done today. A rare honor as the first journalist to get a sortie. We have any problems about RT and we are in close form, so I'll indicate to you five or six. I would be flying today with some of the most experienced Tejas test pilots. Group Captain Rajiv Joshi would be in command of the jet. I would fly. Well, strapping up in a G-suit is an essential part of flying on a fighter aircraft. A G-suit ensures that when we are up in the air, we are essentially safe from the G-forces all around us. At 11.45 a.m., we walk to the aircraft at the dispersal at the Yelahanka Air Base outside Bengaluru. Decades in development, this homegrown fighter is now mature technology. Find out what it means for the armed forces. Small, nimble and fairly unique, the Tejas light combat aircraft is India's effort at catching up with the world's great aviation manufacturers. Media Round Group Captain Joshi Vishnu Som, NDTV, 15th Feb, customer demo flight. Now after more than three long decades in development, that has happened to a large extent. We line up for takeoff with the second Tejas twin-seater. Rolling. Max Wicket. And takeoff together. Flying in airspace between Bengaluru and Mysore, I'm showcased how the Tejas has come of age its systems, its cockpit layout, and its maneuverability. We pull up for a 5.6G maneuver, a gut-wrenching move where you feel the equivalent of 5.6 times your body weight spread equally over your body. Okay, Vishnu, can you see him on the head-up? Yeah, I can As see him on the head -up. Up. Yeah, I can see him. Okay, increase speed 300. Okay, After a sortie lasting an hour, we line up for the runway at Yelahanka and come into land. Criticized for decades as a project that's simply taken too long to come up, the Tejas has today come a long way. 83 of the fighters have been ordered by the Indian Air Force and the first squadron of Tejas jets has been formed in the Indian Air Force. But there is still a long way to go. Last month, the Navy chief said the naval prototype of the fighter meant to land on aircraft carriers wasn't fit to enter service. The manufacturers of the jet have now confirmed that an LCA Navy Mark II remains a fully sanctioned project by the government and will meet the Navy's requirements, but that's still a few years away. Navy Mark II, we have evolved a design wherein we are actually moving the wing outboards by about 350 millimeters on either side. We are stretching out the fuselage by about uh, one meter. What does it do? It helps us in creating space within the fuselage and the wing where the landing gear can be easily retracted and we have a simpler, lighter landing gear that can go in, number one. Second is by stretching the fuselage out like that, we are freeing up also the center fuselage space and that gives us something like about 700 kgs of extra fuel which is very important in terms of range and uh, payload. So is the Tejas a glass half empty as a project or a glass half full? It depends on how you look at it. On the one hand, indigenous engineers have done a stellar job in manufacturing key technologies. The digital flight computer, the carbon composite structure, the entire cockpit and dozens of subsystems. But the Tejas still has key systems which are imported. Its engines, radars and weapons, for example. But that's not a unique problem. Many leading Western manufacturers also import systems they do not have. The key word is integration, and that's where Team Tejas has done well. It's also easy to forget that the Tejas was meant to be an old MiG-21 replacement. Instead, it's now a modern fighter aircraft, though clearly a generation behind the latest fighters which are being manufactured. That's because the Tejas is a 90s design, and research and development is bound to take time. So what's the bottom line with the Tejas? Yes, the fighter is never going to redefine the word state of the art, but at the same time, the development of the Tejas is a fairly positive indicator of where India stands in its ability to manufacture fighter aircraft. And from what I've seen, the light combat aircraft Tejas, like the rockets built by ISRO, is an example of how homegrown engineering may have come of age. Well, what you see all around me is not just the Tejas aircraft, 
but Team Tejas. These are flight testers, these are test pilots, these are engineers, and these are professionals who've been associated with this program for many, many years. They know exactly what the Tejas can do today, and they hope to know what the Tejas can do tomorrow as well. I'm going to go straight across to Air Vice Marshal A.P. Singh. Sir, you head the National Flight Test Center. Um, you've flown the Tejas now for quite some time. When you joined the program a few years back, where was the jet and where is it now? See, when, I got it, sir. Yeah. Uh, when we joined the program, like when I joined in 2006, first time, 2005 actually, it was in the actually incipient stage. We were flying the basic aircraft with the uh, different engine, different avionics. It was the previous design of 1990s conceived, but now what we have is an open architecture uh, avionics. We have a different engine. We have a fully uh, FADEC controlled engine now. All the weapons have been integrated. All the avionics, like the radar, the laser detection pod, everything has been integrated. So now what you see is a fully capable aircraft who is ready to go for war. I'm told by a lot of pilots, and I was actually showed that today, is the ease of maneuvering the aircraft, the ease of operating it, flying it. It's actually quite simple. Uh, what does that say about the flight control system? The flight control system has been designed to uh, implement exactly what the pilot desires. So we have actually spent a lot of hours on the simulator expressing to the engineers how we want it to fly. And that has to be turned into numbers. So all that sweat that, all that, sweat that is going in, Luckily, no blood on this program. We're very proud of the fact that no blood has gone in this program. All There's not been one incident. There's not been saying. one incident uh, at all so far. And all the sweat has paid off in, in terms of the fact that the aircraft flies exactly like the simulator. That's the ultimate compliment you can pay uh, a fly-by-wire aircraft. Captain Dahiya, you're a, a relatively uh, young pilot over here. Not that you're very old, sir. No, I'm not suggesting that at all. But what does it feel like um, as somebody who's come off the Sea Harriers uh, to move on to this program? It must be a tremendous honor to be associated with something that's important for the country. Uh, it's it's not just an aircraft, it's, it's a national project. Absolutely, Vishnu. And in fact, uh, I feel not only proud to be associated with the program, it's a pleasure as a pilot to fly the plane in the first place. And uh, it's, uh, you know, held us in very good stead while we've been doing all the maneuvering with the aircraft. And I hope to carry it through to the naval program. In fact, most of it is being carried through to the naval program, only we need to make it more navalized is what we are working on. Once that's done, I think we are nearly there. And I must uh, ask uh, you, you, we had a great sortie today and you demonstrated a lot of um, what's on the aircraft. Um, it strikes me that integration is what the Tejas is all about today. That may not have been in the case in the past, but today you showed me certain uh, laser designator pods, you showed me the multifunction displays. Uh, put together in simple terms, for a warfighter, what does this integration mean? See, the, okay, the best part about this is that, first thing, Whatever you see on the aircraft and the way it is integrated is something that we have made. This whole team which is behind this aircraft, engineers, designers, everybody. And the ease of uh, using it is in the fact that tomorrow if you want thing A to be a little different. In the earlier aircraft, it was uh, done. I mean, you couldn't change it. Here, the displays and the integration, sensor fusion is something that you control. So you can make it to come out the way you want to fight. The uh incorporation of new state-of-the-art weapons as being an absolutely essential part of this project. Uh, where were we a few years back and where are we today in simple terms? Yeah, uh, weaponization of course uh, is, 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 uh, is an ongoing process always. You always start with uh, the uh, so-called dumb uh, weapons, uh, practice stores and the uh, weapons which are not guided. So we started off with the practice uh, CBLS, uh, uh, I mean stores on the CBLS practice stores. Thereafter, we went on to dumb bombs, the 1,000-pounder and the other uh, Russian uh, bombs. This aircraft is capable of carrying both the Russian as well as the NATO stores, which is, which is a unique feature uh, in the Indian inventory. Mm -hmm. um, thereafter, we graduated to the laser-guided weapons, uh, the bombs. Then uh, we have the air-to-air missiles. Now we are integrating the beyond visual range missiles, the Derby missile. Uh, we still have a long way to go. The smart weapons, which are likely to be integrated in the future. The, um, uh, so it's, it's a continuous process. You, you can never put a stop to it because you know, there's always the upgradation taking place in terms of the avionics, in terms of the weapons. So you sh our aircraft, fortunately, is capable of integrating any uh, futuristic weapon. So we've built that into the design and uh, we should be able to integrate any weapon in the future. Um, I got to ask you a, a slightly tough question. Now, you've flown the Sukhoi 30, you've flown many other aircraft. We know the Sukhoi 30 to be a world-class platform. Do you genuinely believe this aircraft is a world-class pl uh, platform today? 
Absolutely, Vishnu. Firstly, let me compliment you for uh, your sortie today. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm sure that uh, with your uh, experience and background of having flown various world-class aeroplanes, you would be able to uh, compare yourself as to what is the capability of this machine. Notwithstanding that, we have uh, fantastic aeroplanes in the Indian Air Force inventory. However, this aeroplane uh, is something which is very, very unique. You know, we have uh, inherited a great deal of uh, you know experience from people, and as Malankar sir brought out. We have been absolutely you know, to the point. And the aircraft has performed fantastic, uh, you know, given wonderful performance. Well, there you have it, Team Tejas. And I need to say that this is just a small amount of Team Tejas. There are many others who are Team Tejas members who are actively involved in so many aspects of this project. This gives you a small idea of what this aircraft today is. The message from Team Tejas, forget about the pessimism, look at the future because the learning blocks of this project will help India in the days ahead.